Well, fellas, mark your calendars because August is going to have one hell of a week. Primarily August the 23rd through August the 26th. The raid is going to be launching a mere three days after the release of the new season. And I know no one likes that. People like to actually like enjoy the season, get into the narrative, play with the new exotics before like rushing straight into a raid. Personally, I live for this chaos. Today, guys, we're going to talk about bounty hoarding. And even though there's going to be contest mode for the first 24 hours, after that 24 hours, you're going to want to have your level as high as possible. Now, we don't know which raid it's going to be. Honestly, everybody seems to be pretty conflicted. Some people are like King's Fall. I personally want Wrath back. Granted, which one of these narratively makes sense? We're well, considering we just got through dealing with Savathic, and she even mentioned Oryx a number of times. Probably King's Fall. However, the big difference this season is that the day one raid is going to be on a Friday instead of a Saturday. This is due in part to the fact that Val the Disciple had so many issues, people were getting kicked, and Bungie didn't have everyone at their studio like they normally do during the weekday. So, they decided to fix this by just having a Friday launch. The good thing is, is the power cap for the new raid will be 1560, which we're pretty much already at this season with season 17. Everyone should be able to just jump right into the raid. But after that first 24 hours, you do want to have a higher level, which is why I don't normally say hoard your bounties. But in this case, hoard your bounties because they can make a big difference, especially when it comes to artifact mods like classy restoration, which can keep you alive. We saw that with the duality dungeon, how good those mods were. Things like solar fulmination, revitalizing blast all of these things really help in-game content which will drastically help you in the new raid especially if you can start unlocking mods in those final two columns now for those of you that don't know bounty hoarding is used by us destiny players to carry xp over into the next season bounties are distributed by almost every vendor in the game completing these bounties will award you vendor rank but it'll also give you experience for your seasonal rank and since artifact mod unlocks are based on how much xp you've acquired in a given season this is how we're going to gain access to those tier four and tier five juicy mods as well as of course increasing our level on the service it's very simple turn in a bunch of bounties get a bunch of experience and that's it baby blow your load but wait a minute not all bounties are created equal actually not all bounties even offer you experience you need to make sure you grab the correct bounties to maximize your rewards you don't want to waste your time farming bounties that won't give you a benefit to your level and if you decide to go crazy and farm every bounty possible you only have 63 slots on each character shared between your quests and bounties so choosing the bounties that will give you the most x XP is very important. Now, the amount of experience a bounty gives is identified in text when you hover over it. In the rewards section, it just says XP. This will give you a base amount of experience. And when pluses are added on the end, it increases the amount of XP you can gain. Weekly bounties grant the most amount of experience at XP++. Dailies give you XP+, and additional repeatable bounties give you the base XP. Now, you only want to focus on collecting XP+, and XP++. Repeatable bounties really are not worth touching since they're not worth your time or your your slots. And if you collect and complete daily and weekly bounties from every vendor consistently between now and season 18, you should fill up or get very close to maxing out all 63 slots on all your characters. Today, we have gathered a list of all the XP++ weekly bounties that you'll want to hoard as well as tips on how to complete them efficiently. And a big special thanks to Captain Fury who helped us put together this guide. He's constantly doing PvE carries and help over on Twitch, so we'll have them linked in the description below. Now, before we get into our bounty list, I do want to mention one other thing. Always, always, always at the beginning of a new season, guys, join your teammates when you turn in your bounties, especially if they have a higher seasonal rank than you. This is because you have incremental bumps and in XP gains when you're with your fire team members. And this little bump could add a lot of experience and it's unlocked at different tiers on your season pass. The other thing you want to constantly do is always rock blinding lights. This increases XP gains by 12%. I pretty much rock this constantly for like the first two, three weeks anyways, and then branch off to other things if necessary. Now, let's start with our bounties. The first set of bounties you need to get are Sean Han's two weekly bounties in the Cosmo Drop. These are very easy to complete, and you can get two done each week from now until the next season. Grab these guys. They're essentially free. Eris Morn also has two weekly bounties on the moon. Now, they take a little bit longer to complete, but they are easy to do. Now, next to Eris is also the Lectern of Enchantment, which also has two more weekly bounties that requires you to kill Nightmares. Now, the Nightmare Sojourner bounty can be progressed in the Leviathan as well as the Duality Dungeon. So you can kind of double up there. Star Horse also has three weekly bounties, but you can only hold one at a time. The gold bounty on the right grants the same amount of experience as the other two weeklies. So just grab one of the easier ones that does not require a legendary dares completion. Now, Hawthorne has eight weekly bounties. These will all require you to do activities with clanmates. One is for the raid. One is for nightfalls. These are both static and will not rotate out of her inventory. The remaining six are for Gambit and Crucible. These rotate weekly, but this is a random rotation. So it is possible 
before multiple bounties appear on back-to-back -back weeks. Varex has four weekly bounties on Europa. Courageous Expedition is static. The remaining three are on a three-week rotation corresponding to each Empire hunt. Now, each of these bounties require precision kills in and in completion of the hunt. On lower difficulties, it takes multiple runs of a hunt to get enough precision kills. But this is why you want to grab the Empire hunt quest from Varex as well. As long as the quest is in your inventory, any precision kills on Europa will count towards the weekly bounty. So you can complete your precision kills while multitasking daily bounties and then running through the hunt to complete the bounty, saving you even more time. Now, Petra Binge has seven weekly bounties in the Dreaming City. The getaway between worlds is static and the remaining six are on a six week rotation, corresponding to the Ascendant Challenge, which is live each week. Those of you who are new to the game may not know about these, but the Ascendant Challenges are short activities in the Dreaming City that take you into the Ascendant Plane. Now, upon completing this challenge, it completes the bounty. Now, a great resource if you're working on these is actually Stixer. Brother, I hope I'm saying your name right. He uploads walkthroughs of the current Ascendant Challenge each week. He's been making these for over a year, so a link to that will be down below. Now, the astute among you may be wondering why we left out Solstice weekly bounties. The reason for this is that it's very likely they will be removed from the game at Season Reset, leaving you with no bounty to claim. Event bounties have remained between seasons before, but it's not 100% guarantee. So save these at your own risk. And again, you don't want to really save bounties that may be going away because that just takes up a slot. And the same goes for also seasonal bounties like dailies at the Crown of Sorrow, as it's possible those will be removed as well. Now, while you're completing the weekly bounties, grab daily bounties while you are at each of these vendors. You won't have enough weekly bounties to fill all 63 spots, so any leftover space you want to fill up with those daily bounties. And all of the weekly bounty vendors will have daily bounties as well. This includes Finch from the Throne World, Zer from Eternity, Banshee from the Tower, Zavala from the Tower, Drifter, Shax, Devram K in the EDZ, Failsafe and Nessus, and Saint-14 at the Tower. Now, each vendor will have rotations for their daily bounties as well, so you may actually get multiple in a row here that you're unable to pick up if you previously completed them. Again, though, don't waste your time on repeatable bounties. You will get enough dailies in rotation. Now, as a final tip, you can always use the website Bray.tech to track your bounty progress. It almost updates in real time, and you need a general idea of what bounties you need to progress without constantly having to open up your inventory. This site is fantastic. Just log in with your Destiny account and navigate to your quest tab to display all of your bounties. So that's it, guys. If you're consistently grabbing bounties over the next few weeks, you should have a solid amount of weeklies and daily bounties to turn in. I do have one more piece of advice. Some of the best XP you can get is the seasonal challenges. Now, we will have a limited amount of them as they are released one week at a time. But some of these are XP plus plus plus. So they drop multiple levels worth of experience from a single challenge. Now, you can't prep these beforehand, but for the three days leading up to the raid, these will greatly boost your progress toward those final mod slots. There's also another good website called destinyrecipes.com that has a preseason checklist that after you link your Destiny account, will show you how much experience you have stored and then will convert that to the number of artifact mods that you can unlock with that experience. So with the combination of saving up these bounties and the seasonal challenges, even before the raid on Friday, we should have access to at least one, maybe two tier five mods, which is a huge plus. Again, you see how good classy restoration is. That mod alone keeps you alive and is so good in a contest mode environment. So unless Bungie pulls a fast one and disables artifact mods, this is going to be the best use of your time from now until next season. So guys, good luck with the grind. And again, if you want to play at your own pace, by all means, you don't have to do this. We're Destiny players though, man. We over-optimize. I kind of like it. Again, links to those websites will be in the description. And we'll also be streaming the Destiny 2 reveal for Lightfall, August the 23rd over on our Twitch channel, as well as the raid and everything else. So feel free to come by. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.